Hi and welcome to Solar FPV, my name is Anos and well I have made a whole long build video about this quad here which is a little toothpick that um, I finally got transitioned from the parts from this one if you remember this. It didn't really perform that well, it was way too heavy with the canopy and everything and the thick bottom plate. Very resilient because it did have some crashes, I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, not, a very resilient but not so flyable. Not on 1S, and that was, I need a 1S, I need a 1S little thing like this, because I used to have these when we were running brushed uh, quads, I actually have one here, and this is a little 1S, right, with uh, brush motors, uh, this is just a transition of uh, uh, an old toy thing onto a frame, it's very nice, still flies very well, but it can't do acro, and it can't do all the modern stuff that we want to do. You know, um, so yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, let's do a shout out to uh, Ray if, uh, first. Um, Ray FPV, you asked if these were, you know, you wanted to know something about these. Now I just, I've flown a couple of packs, and for now, man, this um, this seems pretty good. I, it's, I can't really. Feels like a uh, like a a GNB battery. Um, I don't know about the 1100 milliamps yet because I haven't, I've only flown this line of sight. I just wanted to see how it performed. You know, sometimes it's easier to see, at least for me, if it's doing any weird stuff and you can hear the motors and you can. So I've flown it light of sight, always my quads at first to see how it looks in the air. And then afterwards, when I put the goggles on, I actually, you know, kind of know what to, what to expect. Um, but the, for now, these are all right. I I don't know. You know, in the long term, I'm gonna be doing these two packs a day thing. I think with this, and uh, to get Goddard FPV, as they say, and uh, freestyle, and I'm gonna be sharing those with you this springtime. Um, it's still bloody cold outside. Uh, nine degrees minus nine centigrade here uh, tonight, and it's freezing outside still. Uh, not an optimal time to f test these batteries in in that. Uh, but I did fly yesterday and it was about one degree centigrade and it flew great. But these are brand new, so let's see over time. Um, uh, I think maybe the ADC is bright. It definitely did feel like it It had some grunt, this. Uh, it doesn't have the craziest punch, but that's I think it's due to the two blade props and it's 1S. Um, but it has enough, enough to catch itself because it doesn't weigh very much. So. Yeah, the transition from this to this saved me about 30 grams. And um, this now weighs 39.7 grams, which is pretty light. And with a battery, 61 grams. So that's, that's pretty much what this one weighed um, without a battery. So... I think, if I remember right. Um, what else have we got? Well, uh, let's address some issues I had while building this because um, on this quad, you can see it's got like the cutout right there for the USB to go th under so you can get to the USB. So you can mount the board the right way around because these boards are meant to be mounted like this. So what happened? <laughs> well, beta flight, um, in beta flight motors on the, the let's start again the flight controller has some motor outputs four of them from the ESCs and those motor outputs have a number and um, when the board is placed correctly and which is like this actually now before doing any editing in beta flight or in the CLI uh, the motor output would be one no oh, sorry one two three four Right, uh, and that's still the case. Even though, if you tell the flight controller that it's been rolled 180 degrees uh, in the alignment board alignment uh, configuration part, the motor outputs are still going to be one, two, three, four. But up in the configuration, you'll see one, two, three, four. So the quad still doesn't know where the motors are placed, so it will spaz out when you do that, like totally. Now, watching a Josh, uh, Joshua 
Bodwell video, he kindly explained how to fix that so you don't have to cross solder across the board to the right uh, motor output because I didn't have space. I didn't want to desolder these motors. They were really fiddly. I mean, these are directly soldered to the um, Crazy BF3 uh, and with the, it's just, it's, it's very tiny. It's very fiddly. So, so instead what you do is you have to know the, the real alignment of the board and where the motor outputs are and kind of draw them down if you if you don't. So for me, I just knew that I had flipped my board 180 degrees to the, like, in roll. And so my motor outputs were now as standard in the configuration in the CLI, one, two, three, four. So I need to sort of flip that. Now, you can do that in the, um, in the CLI. All you have to do is write resource and then press enter. And when you do that, you'll see a resource motor one, and then you'll see like a, a, a number, and that's a, an output port number, port number. And you can switch these around. Now, the original remap for the Crazy B is resource motor one, B10, and there's just a little space between, there's resource space, motor, space, one, space, B10, and so on. That's how it came I had to I have to resource, I had to swap swap uh, motor one and three, and you can see that here. So what I did was I aligned the board 180 degrees in the configuration tab. Went in the CLI, wrote resource motor one B07, resource motor two B08, resource motor three B10, resource motor four B06. So comparing to this. I think you'll probably understand because of the flip, right? Now, um, it's very important that you keep a note of your original remap if you would ever want to flip it over again. But once you've done this, I think it'll just make your life a lot more easy because you can literally place your your flight controller however weird you want in the, in the angle and just resource the outputs to what's easiest for you. As long as you know the original one, two, three, and four, uh, because those outputs don't change; those are always the same. It's only what the flight controller expects those, where those to be, that you change with this. Um, yeah, I hope that made sense. If it doesn't, leave me a comment down below, and I'll try and answer your questions best as possible. Um, yeah. This quad has got the uh, Diatone Mamba 1103, uh, the MB1103 1200KV. These work really well on uh, 1S. Really impressed. I have got the HQ props, the 65mm bi blades. You could probably run them on the 3 inch HQ bi blades as well. They're significantly bigger. I think you'd get a lot more punch out with these if the battery can provide it. So, of course, changing this to a, a bigger wires inside the battery and also changing this to an XT30, then I think this would be a really good option. But for now, I'm going to be running it like this. And eventually, when I don't have any more props left, I think I've only got these two, maybe two more somewhere. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, I've got some in here as well in the Magic. It's always good to have one of these. Yeah, I've got... Oh, I've got plenty in here. I've got more here. So, that's good. So I'll be, um... Let's just get these out, because I'm going to be needing these. Don't you just love this? Um... Oh, there's all kinds of bits and bobs and props and stuff. Um... So, that's what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to be flying two packs a day, get guarded FPV with this, and do some testing of the batteries in the same process, see how well they hold out, these solar good batteries, because, yeah, price is decent, competitive, not too, not they're not super cheap, so they're like uh, GNB cost, a little bit cheaper maybe, but um, for now, this is what I'm going to be using, and I think it might actually be good. Um, I haven't seen them on Banggood, I've seen them on AliExpress, if you want to get them and test them out yourself before I've done the testing and said that this is a good product. I'm not going to leave you any uh, links down below, I don't do that with stuff I haven't tested thoroughly, 
and stuff that I, others haven't tested thoroughly. Uh, I just don't think it's fair for, to promote <laughs> any kind of product that you're not affiliated affiliated with in the first place um, if you haven't bought it yourself or used it yourself it's just not viable um, so no links at all search for them the frame it looks like this excuse me it doesn't come chamfered I had to chamfer this myself with a file uh, to do that I use one of these diamond file no it's not it's just a little metal file tiny it's actually, I think it's made for carbon. It's a very fine file. I just do the chamfering of the edges here so it's not sharp in any way. And, um, um, yeah. It's got a solid plug because I bought solid plug loose ones to use. So, um, and that does make a huge difference, actually. The camera is an Eachine all-in-one. Um, 25 milliwatt, the thing that came with the uh, UK65, it's one of those cameras, um, I think it's called the EOX X6, uh, it's X06, I can't remember, but that's the one I'm using because it fits perfectly in here and it's very light and it's cheap, um, yeah, stay tuned for more, uh, RC and FPV related content. Leave me a like and a comment and a subscribe and a bell uh, if you want to stay tuned and you want to know exactly when I upload because I upload uh, when I have time. Um, not on a, I'm, I don't live from doing this. I've got other stuff to do, but um, this is a hobby. And yeah, so if you want to see the Get Garden FPV and all that, it's good to hit the bell because then you'll never miss an episode. So yeah, that's good and it helps me and the channel and us in general growing and then i'll be able to make you know more and more of this in time so uh, thank you very much for watching uh, i'll see you in the next one um stay safe out there and as always fly hard <laughs>